Welcome to YouTube Science Communication. My name is Maximus. This is the 63rd video that I've made for this class, and today's video is going to be about the origin of life. Let's begin. Hello! I'm Julia Child. I'm in my own kitchen today, and I'm boiling up some primordial soup. And there is a primordial soup machine. We're doing a recipe for the chemical building blocks of life. So the assignment for this video was to watch this playlist about the origin of life from a bunch of educational YouTube channels. Welcome to Crash Course Big History, Stated where today we are going to get a life. And then to make a video of your own using clips from them. Hmm. Okay, so what is life then? What I want to focus on in this video is just how surprisingly difficult it is to get a good definition of life. Like, it shouldn't be that complicated, but it is. It's pretty clear that life is a different thing from the rest of the universe, but what makes up that difference? I'm kind of surprised that this turns out to be a super puzzling question that we have yet to come up with a 100% satisfying answer to. You'd think biology would have a good definition for life, the thing it studies. But as a biologist, I can tell you this is much harder than it sounds. So why is it so hard? Well, if you look at a standard biology textbook, chapter one, section one, it's gonna try to define life with a list of properties. This one says energy and cells and information and rep. This is a really tricky one. Nobody really knows what information is, but it's gonna be on the list anyway. Most of the videos you'll find on YouTube on this topic have similar lists. In school, many people learn a checklist for the characteristics a thing must have in order to be alive. It has a wall that separates it from the surroundings creating order. It regulates itself and maintains a constant state. It eats stuff to stay alive. It grows and develops. It, it reacts to, to the, the environment. environment. It has and a metabolism that processes energy to keep itself going, like humans do with pizza. The problem with these definition lists is that they're sort of just like ad hoc collections of properties. There's nothing that holds them all together. And like Joe from It's Okay to Be Smart is well aware of this, but he uses lists anyway. None of these definitions really help us. I think we might be asking the wrong question because life isn't a thing that things have. Life is what living things do. Life isn't a noun. It's not a thing to be characterized. It's a verb. It's something that happens. In the last several decades, we've made some really remarkable advances in organic chemistry that can make it seem like we're really close to solving this big puzzle about how life emerged, at least technically, the chemistry story. It's possible, actually, that this problem could be solved in our lifetimes, which is pretty exciting. I think John Green is right. I think we probably will have a pretty convincing story within our lifetimes. And I say that because I don't believe that the biggest mysteries about life's origins are chemical ones anymore. We've learned quite a lot of molecular biology. When simple molecules are left alone with an energy source, they interact with one another, often forming larger, more complex molecules as time goes on. The remaining mystery is not how the chemistry of living systems works. The mystery is what makes that chemistry alive. Of all the stuff that makes up a cell, no part is alive. Everything is dead matter moved by the laws of the universe. I don't think that everything is dead matter moved by the laws of the universe, or at least characterizing matter as dead is a bit of a category error. Dead or alive aren't properties that matter can have. They apply to whole systems, networks of relationship and interaction. Life is a verb. Not a noun. Some approaches to the origin of life have recognized this. That's why a lot of recent stories talk about information theory. So, maybe life is information that manages to ensure its continued existence. But this doesn't really solve the problem because information isn't a noun either. Like, I know we store information on hard drives, so it's really tempting to think that it's a thing, but it's not. Like, when you get down to it, information is significance-making. It's a process, just like everything else. Life began the moment that molecules of information started to reproduce and evolve by natural selection. If you treat information like a noun, like in that last clip, then really you're just replacing one mystery with another one. Like, instead of asking, how did life begin, now you're asking, how did information begin? But you haven't really provided an explanation, you've just changed the words you're using. What is life, then? Things? Processes? DNA? Information? This got confusing very fast. 
One concept that I think is often missing from conversations about the origin of life is agency or selfhood. Like, for me, the thing that makes life alive doesn't have anything to do with the chemistry. DNA could have two nucleotides or ten, it wouldn't matter. What makes that chemistry alive is that however it's instantiated, the chemistry has a function, and that function is to do work to perpetuate itself. What makes you different from a star is that while a star burns down till it dies and doesn't actively float around the cosmos looking for more fuel, a living organism does actively seek out pizza to keep itself going, preferably long enough to, you know, have some babies. A complete story about the origin of life continues to evade us, but there are a few things that we can say with certainty. One of them is that life emerged from chemistry. Life emerged from chemistry. But just because life emerged from chemistry doesn't mean that it's reducible to it. I think that if we want to get a more complete story, we need to start asking different questions. I think we might be asking the wrong question. We should stop looking for special life things, molecules of information, molecules of information, and instead look at processes. In particular, I think we should look for processes that give us a hint about this feeling that we all experience, this feeling of being a self, an I, a thing that can act in the world, that feeling of selfhood, we should look for processes that give us a hint about how that emerged from a system which was previously just matter in motion. Thanks for watching. This video is part of a class called YouTube Science Communication, where we learn about the history of life on Earth while we learn how to make videos about it together. If you like this video and want to see more, you can hit the subscribe button over there. And if you want to make videos like this one alongside us, you can check out our Patreon page. There's a lot of info on there, including links to all of our course material and stuff like that if you want to take the class with us. All right, I will see you in the next video.